Good morning, everybody. My name is Ron Bergman. I'm the Vice President for Technology here at Lehman College, and I am the Chief Information Officer. I want to welcome you, everybody in the audience, and I want to welcome you, everybody who's seeing this live uh, from around the world. Uh, we also, as uh, Alfredo mentioned, I want to thank Alfredo uh, and Hetz uh, for uh, convening this, along with uh, Dr. Jafari and with um, uh, the Online Education Department of, of Lehman. I also want to acknowledge the people who will be presenting with me from the IT staff, Dr. Joseph Medved, Lee Millman, and Artie Deshmark. Thank you all very much. The purpose of this presentation is to talk about big data and analytics at Lehman College. Um, how many of you in the audience are familiar with the concept of big data and analytics and business intelligence? Could you raise your hand for me? Okay, great. There's a number of people. And I'm sure that's true for you, uh, for the people who are online. Uh, it is something that is prevalent throughout the world in most organizations, in the private sector, um, less so in public education, becoming more prominent. Uh, certainly, uh, we learn from our colleagues and we want to learn from you, so please do ask questions for those of you who are online and in the audience. Um, this chart is from Forrester, and it shows the idea that we've come from the 1900s through the present through many industrial ages and cycles, starting with the age of manufacturing, um, the age of distribution and, and having a, an infrastructure for the delivery of goods, the age of information and the age of the customer. Uh, we're now moving into new ages, the next uh, machine age, if you will, and sometimes we see the cyclical rotation. So the 1900s, which was the age of industrial manufacturing, it can now be seen on desktop computers with 3D printing, with the idea of manufacturing at your desktop, something that's becoming, uh, moving uh, into the mainstream and certainly a trend to watch. Um, big data uh, has been regarded as the next frontier for innovation, competition, and productivity, and there's no doubt that big data is the tool that is being used widely without even you knowing it. Those of you, how many of you are Amazon customers? I am a big Amazon customer, UPS comes to my door probably on a daily basis to my wife's regret. Um, the the um, idea uh, that uh, Amazon is now going with is, th is that they know what you order and they are now using models to predict what you're ordering even before you order it and so they have it nearby in the warehouse. Um, the idea of uh, big data and uh, is to really think about business intelligence, analytics, and big data in new ways and to define what these are. Business intelligence often is referred to as the ability to use software and other tools to analyze an organization's raw data. Analytics, we talk about the idea of discovery and communication and making meaningful, meaningful patterns um, out of that data. And the idea of collecting data from digital sources, typically in the past, we collected data from our databases. It was structured. Now big data is moving into the idea of taking information from other sources, from Twitter, from Facebook, from unstructured data, and trying to make meaning out of that. Um, so it's not a big claim to say that big data will change how higher education makes decisions and take, takes action. Um, big data has been, and, and um, analytics, has been among the top ten issues of EDUCAUSE. So I just want to show a brief uh, video from EDUCAUSE. It'll be about three minutes. So let's turn to the video. Steve, it's in um, Firefox, right? We've reached a tipping point. For many of our institutional leaders, the wealth of data and the maturation of analytics tools are creating a critical mass to engage in data-informed solutions. Analytics can help shed light on questions surrounding a host of complex issues, like the uncertainty of funding, the difficulty of student retention, the problem of college affordability, and more. Analytics is the use of data statistical analysis, and explanatory and predictive models to gain insights and act on complex issues. Analytics can provide insights to a wide variety of uncertainties for an institution. For this reason, analytics must start with a question or hypothesis. Once you understand what, what it is you want to answer, it's relatively easy to understand what data you might need to answer that question. 
Uh, so that's the easy step. The real challenge, I think, with analytics, uh, and it relates to benchmarking as well, is um, you, you need to build systems within member institutions to actually collect that data and collect that data in a consistent manner. And so the challenge for many institutions is to see what data is available, what data is being produced, and then being able to capture that near real time so that you can do analysis on it. Once the data is collected and put into a data warehouse, it's time to decide what sort of analysis best suits the questions asked and the data collected. So budget, you know, annual budget stuff, you can do that out of a transactional system, you could probably pull it into Excel and slice and dice it and do some, some level of analysis. But analytics, for me, it, it's really kind of taking that all and moving it to a very, very different level. And in order to get it to that very, very different level about thinking about, you know, trending and what ifing and you need to bring the data into a format where you can literally kind of take the data and move it around in certain ways and patterns emerge. Predictive modeling allows institutions to create a model of their data in order to predict the probability of an outcome. These models are being used on a number of campuses to drive innovation. At Carnegie Mellon University, the Open Learning Initiative collects analytics data to drive feedback loops to help students, instructors, course designers, and learning science researchers. At Austin P. State University, they have developed Degree Compass, which uses predictive analytics to rank course choices according to how well each course might help the student progress through a chosen program. Analytics very much has a part to play because it really can go back and use the, the wealth of data that's sitting out there. Institutions are sitting on terabytes of historical data and then we're able to then mobilize that data to really be able to, to make those decisions informed. While analytics are being used more widely than ever before. Okay, just wanted to give you an insight from Educause and see how some universities are actually using analytics and talk a little bit about the journey that we have at, uh, at Lehman College because we started our analytics dirt journey um, about four years ago. And we use uh, an Oracle tool. And today, there are so many other analytics tools that are available that are not IT-centric, but user-centric. And so if we were starting today, we would potentially opt for looking at some of these other tools that are out there. So if there's any way we can help any of the member institutions at HETS with our experience um, to learn more um, and have our own webinar uh, specifically with you, we'd be happy to do that. So please let us know. So we're talking about the next industrial revolution. So big data um, has been uh, regarded as something that is um, essential to innovate um, products and services, certainly in higher education, and that we're generating more and more data. So we have to figure out how to tame it. Lots of books about this, the new industrial revolution, talking about makers, the people who are using desktop uh, 3D machines. The Second Machine Age is, probably, is the most recent book, talking about how technology is disrupting how we do business and how we provide services. It also ha means that there are rapid changes in the environment and new jobs that are being created and jobs that are being um, disrupted as a result of that. So, the idea here uh, in terms of the Lehman College experience is that we tried to do three things. Um, the first is to describe the past, what happened and why. Looking at reporting and a better way to do reporting to make it available to users and to make it something that was widely accessible and transparent. Next issue is, okay, what's happening today? How can we take this data and understand why it's happening and what we can do? And I would call the holy grail, if you will, and the things that need to be done most carefully in terms of experimentation, this idea of taking the data from the past and doing the analysis to understand what does it mean for the future, and that's moving into the area of predictive. And we're only beginning to go there, uh, and we're doing so very carefully, uh, taking some what-if questions and beginning to look at that. Um, what, what will happen and what should we be done? We have limited resources like many of you in terms of staff resources, in terms of budget, uh, and in terms of our interventions, we want to make sure that we are the most effective and that our interventions have the highest results to make sure that our students are progressing, that they're successful, and that they're retained. 
So at this point, what we're going to do is transition. I'm going to ask Dr. Joseph Medved to come up. He will introduce the next uh, speakers and speak a little bit more about our journey. And then we'll hear from Lee and Artie with regard to showing you some real examples of how we've used these tools here at Lehman College. So thank you very much. We're glad to have you. And we'll be back for questions later. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm the head of Application Development at Database Group. And I just want to continue what Ron started here, talking about big data, business analytics, and predictive modeling. So how are we actually at Lehman College adapting all those techniques and innovations? Uh, as you see on this uh, slide, the student scenario, and it says it's adapted from Gartner, we were very active, actually, in um, IT conferences, and different shows. We presented a number of conferences. We visited EDUCOS a number of times, and also I visited this um, spring, the Gartner IT Summit. And it was really very helpful and showed to our environment and our team that what the world is doing, uh, we're doing the same. And we are really on the tip uh, of the iceberg and trying to catch up in these directions. So the student, if you're talking about student scenario here, uh, we go through the following steps, if, if uh, you will, uh, what student does. Uh, student ask a question, inform me. Tell me if the class is filled, which class I can attend, whether I have to register. Educate me. Teach me how I select another class. Advise me, maybe I can take the class in another school in CUNY, not uh, in Lehman College at that point. And uh, to get done with this uh, step, register me, is at Lehman or another college if, uh, of CUNY if the course is available to me. Um, Lehman examples, how we use those tools in our environment. It's, we go in two directions. You saw the little clip which uh, told you where the world going. They're using business intelligence and business analytics, and they're also using predictive modeling. We did a lot of things in both of those directions, and I'll be very happy to present our two main developers, one in business analytics and database activities, and another one in uh, predictive modeling using regression analysis. They'll be next on the podium. But before, um, before I do that, I just want to tell to the audience and also to the internet viewers who are now watching us, hopefully, if they're interested, that um, we have to acknowledge a, a huge role of our management of ITR of our CIO and VP, Ron Bergman, who was really innovating and really strategically thinking and planning to, let, to lead the NAS, us, I'm sorry, in this direction. And a lot, we, we achieved a lot, and we showed the example what a good management in combination with even small or talented team can do. Uh, thank you. Lee Milman is the next, who will show you uh, the business intelligent, a business analytic tool at Lehman. Hello, my name is Lee Millman. I'm the Oracle DBA and uh, BI developer. Um, to utilize the big data um, and also produce the application for the users to follow up on the school's data on enrollment, on um, revenue, also financial aid, and um, the admission data, we have this dashboard building a few years ago as um, Ron and Dr. Medved said in the previous presentation. Um, the dashboard including data, as I said, enrollment is a big piece of the data. And in the dashboard, we show the data from different angles on enrollment. We show data on the previous terms. We show data on current terms. We show data on the graduate, undergraduate, on the student gender, the student location, um, all these data is utilized together in the back end for the data, in the database, and all is also utilized in the OBIE um, application 
that you see now. Currently, we are using the, the model. We are looking at the current model for this is the enrollment data for the previous term versus the next term. And to show you very clearly the, the data on the summer for the two uh, continuous years and also for the fall, um, same data shows on the student uh, academic primary to tell you what's the count on current registration on the spring registration. Um, same idea on this, on the next part is for showing you the overall retentions for the, for the student on freshman when we follow the cohort for spring, um, for fall 2011. So you're looking at enrollment data, um, well, previously before this tool when alive in Lehman's were looking at, looking at enrollment data, you have a piece of sheet, right, Excel spreadsheet showing you one look of this enrollment data, but now you're looking at enrollment data in different angles on the previous years, on the current years, comparisons on the student, on graduate, undergraduate, based on different degrees. This is only a small page of the enrollment data, and this is opening page for the VPs and the admins level in the Neiman College um, dashboard. Um, there's also other page, as you see on the tab, which I'll get into it, that's showing you the enrollment data by class, by instructor, by mode, and also by dates. Um, and you can see all these data on the previous years. We back the data from CUNY first data, we back to spring 2011. Previous model, we back the data 2008. And again, um, very beginning when BI come live in Lehman, is user one report. They want report on enrollment, they want report on the registration. Now, the user, BI has become the, uh, LCD has become the tool for user to go for the report. Not only that, LCD also become the tool for user to go for predicting data. How do we analyze the particular cohort? We follow them, follow them throughout the years and the terms and see how the performance goes. Well, BI obviously can offer that, and that's the whole idea of uh, analytical tools. In here, we follow the cohort of fall 2011 freshmen. I mean, and it's telling us, um, okay, that's the beginning of the, um, of the group, stu student group we are following, so how are they doing throughout the terms in Lehman? You can see from here very clearly um, the student number, student number got jobbed and how many students um, got jobs. So give us a clear picture of this particular, particular cohort, the retention data on that. Now, again, this is the data not only from one angle. We are talking about data from the number of students that actually stay with us from that particular cohort, and also what's the GPA range between that among those students? What's the credits they are taking in Lehman? Um, and how, the, how the, the level of credits, the, the GPAs range from the previous semester to next semester. So what type of students actually stay with us? What type of students actually dropped? in this retention um, analysis. Okay, so Lehman, the dashboard has come to this mature part. While we are still having a lot of work to be done, we recently just implemented the financial aid dashboard, which I think is the very first one in, in CUNY. Um, it's a tremendous amount of data to tell us what's the financial aid data in, um, in Lehman College and what grant we put, we giving, offering the most amount of money, how many students in that particular grant. And um, all those are coming um, together with these um, modeling inside of the, the dashboard. Um, we also, in this modeling, we also giving user to the, the sense that in what type of level you log in, allow you to see what type of data. Um, the student, the financial aid data available for the VPs and also for the particular department. The, the um, budgeting expenditure data, which is a big part of the analytics in Lehman College, is only av available to the particular users for that particular department. Okay. So let me get into the, the live data to show you what's the, what's the model we have here and maybe show you a little report we can do. There are many users in the campus. Um, we call it our power users. They can actually go to the tool and uh, produce reports on their own. Um, many times they, they do get stuck on certain point on the, when they're producing reports. A simple phone call of five minutes will allow them to get a report right in front of them. 
They tell us, okay, I'm missing this field. How do I find, find, this, find this field? Five minutes, they have a report in front of them. Unlike previously, they request report, the IT do it, they come back to it, and they, they say, okay, the data is wrong, IT go back to do it and fix the data. Now, many times on the uh, many um, simple reports the user need on the spot, on the run, they can just create ad hoc queries on their own. So this is an enrollment report I showed you before, and this is another enrollment report which is on a different angle to tell you the, the current semester enrollment on it's coming up. On um, graduate, undergraduate, um, for different degrees, and also for um, different um, here. on different credits they are taking. Um, the FTEs, the student gender, the charts go with that, and also this is on the student um, races. And below that, give you the detailed data on how the class is offered. You know, what time is the class, what day is offered, how many students registered. Well, this is beginning of fall, that's why you see the threshold showing up in red. Tell you the instruction mode, we just put this recently um, by the request by um, Dr. Jafari's office. Um, so you're looking at enrollment data, but you're looking at it from different angle, and all these users can log in on this particular page all the users available um, that's in LCD, LCD will be able to see this page. So on user sense, when they see this type of data, obviously this is right in front of them, we already created a dashboard for them. Now how do they predict, do the data on their own when they actually log into BI2 to produce the data on their own? So I'll give you a very simple example, okay? So user login, they go to CUNY First Data, which is um, our current data modeling for the student enrollment, financial aid, um, class information, that data. So if I want to know um, how many students actually register for the particular term, or I do, do I choose a few fields, I want to see the, the primary, and I want to see the employee ID. You choose by the fields, and I want to see what's their current GPA, and I want to choose a term. Okay, now I want to see the next semester, which is in our term is 1149. If I don't want to see this, I can just click on choices. I don't want to type to type. The choices will tell you what's the term I can select on that. So it's quite user friendly um, for user to be able to report on this. Now I choose the term on it, move the term to the forward, I can see my data right away. Okay, and if I move the, the field around, I want to give us a, a general overview of the data I'm looking at because now it's giving you the details, right? With employee ID and the term and the the, the academic program primary, the graduate, undergraduate. Now I want to go back, and now you can see it's only showing the, um, go back, pivot table. Okay, the admin asked to that. Now I want to see how many students on these terms. I want to do a count. If I don't need the GPA, I can move GPA away from here. And give me all these term information. Now I want to, I want to um, only see the, oh, they show me all the terms, okay. I move this away, I want to see the, the chart on all the terms I'm looking at. Okay, I have a simple report in front of me within minutes. Okay, so this kind of report um, can be produced by users. 
Um, obviously, report can get much much more um, difficult than this. We, I, if I want to see the user, the students who's um, in this group, but I also want to see the students has a GPA above 3.5, you can put a whole bunch of filters in it. I want to see students only choosing nursing courses for all through past semesters. You can also put a filter into that. Okay. So that being said, I'm introducing the next presenter, RT um, Dashmonk, and. Um, um, on the Lehman predicting model. Thanks, Lee. Um, so uh, using BI, we are able to see current trends, current data, current semester students, and uh, various other aspects of the data that we currently are gathering. <clears throat> Ron Bergman, our VP, wanted us to take next step in terms of predictive modeling to see what would be the future outcomes of um, uh, certain aspects such as enrollment, attrition. Um, so, um, go back. So we we acquired tools to um, to see what kind of prediction modeling we can do. Uh, so it's a simple regression analytical tool that we are using. Regression analysis, as we know, is a study of um, uh, variables, uh, independent and dependent variables, and their relationship among them. Um, so we are using the regression analytical tool to predict uh, possible outcomes in terms of uh, future enrollment, um, uh, retention, uh, attrition, uh, all, and also graduation rates. So we are building models in terms of uh, these areas. Um, so we built, a, I'm just giving an example of what kind of models. So we started with attrition model. Attrition is um, Attrition is a high concern um, area for all the educational institutions. Uh, so we started with a simple cohort of freshmen um, who started in fall 11. Um, and that simple cohort uh, included 454 full, first time full time freshmen. And we followed them through several semesters, uh, through fall 11 to spring 14, uh, which is the most current data that we have. Um, the parameters that we included for this attrition were how the SA, their SAT scores, the credits that they are taking, credits attempted, credits earned, the cumulative GPA, and their probation rates. Um, those were certain parameters that we included. Um, this model um, is very, um, it shows visualizations of the relationship between parameters, and easily we were able to see that we have 26% attrition rate, um, which is probably the same among many institutions. Uh, the, the best part of this was when the model was finished, the model told us that the, by an end of spring 14, you would have 109 students who would likely to drop out of the semesters. And actual data came very close. We had 118 students who dropped out uh, at end of spring 14. So following them through several semesters, um, we could actually produce lists of students who are likely to drop out and help them um, and in, you know, ha have interventions in terms of um, uh, early, uh, early warning or um, many interventions in terms of how, how we can help them. Uh, we are also using this model, uh, we are going towards this model in terms of freshman enrollment. Um, to see which areas uh, our students are coming from, the zip codes. And it's possible that we will be able to produce lists of students, um, a list of areas to focus on, and we will be able to contact those students in terms of um, our enrollment rates. Um, so this tool produces the prediction model. Uh, the red bars showing the actual uh, prediction um, actual uh, data, and the blue is the predicted model, uh, which comes very close. Um, it also helps us to understand relationship between parameters. Here we were trying to understand um, attrition rates. Um, so it helped us understand the attrition rate and the four semester earned credit. So this chart clearly shows that the part-time students are most likely to drop out. Um, part-time students have the highest attrition rate uh, versus the students who are full-time. So 
uh, we, we need to focus more on the part-time students. It also showed us something clearly that the students who were put on probation the first term, they were more, more likely to attrit uh, in future semesters than the students who were put on probation in the next, few, next semesters. Um, so this is just a glimpse of what this prediction model can do and we are moving um, into other areas using this tool, regression analysis. Are there any questions from the audience? And in the meantime, uh, also we'll ask the folks in the back to see if there's any questions from our online audience. Okay, so, and, so sure. So the question that Allison asked, and I'm going to repeat it for the online audience, is when we look at zip codes, are we also looking at middle schools and high schools? And the fact of the matter is, when it comes to enrollment, and if we have a high rate of enrollment from a particular zip code, it often relates to the high school that the students are in and the relationship between that high school and the guidance counselor um, and the and Lehman. So part of it is to uh, work uh, with this tool, and, and, and you know some of the things that uh, Artie showed are also uh, they confirm intuition, right? The idea that somebody who's on academic probation has a higher likelihood of attriting, perhaps is um, is something that we all know intuitively and from our experiences. So um, <clears throat> the idea here is to confirm intuition. Uh, confirm what we generally think of as um, the way that things have been done in the past, but also to look at new areas. So, for example, um, there may be adjacencies with regard to zip codes um, and other ways to look at um, how we can um, sort of focus in on a particular area. One of our growth areas, for example, is in Yonkers. Yonkers schools, they're right across the border of New York City. Uh, they're north of us, and it's proximate, so it's uh, relatively easy in terms of transportation. So part of it is looking at transportation, at zip codes, and, and high schools, and relationships, and how all these things work together. Is that fair, Artie? Okay, thank you. Does, sure. Yeah, that's a great question, Allison. And the question for the <clears throat> streamed audience is, um, what is the relationship between full and part-time, uh, and also uh, the relationship between fully online and hybrid courses and grades, and how all do those things um, um, mix? Um, the assertion from Allison, uh, which I think we all probably would agree with, is that for part-time students, uh, especially, the idea of having a hybrid course is, um, is useful because they're on campus, they're, they're with their peers, and they're with their faculty member. Um, and so I think we're all struggling with the issue of trying to accommodate student needs. Most of our students, of course, are part-time because they're, they're working, uh, they're parents, uh, and they have obligations. So they're looking for convenience, um, but it's also additive to have that um, campus experience, the classroom experience, and so um, how, uh, what are all the relationships? And that's something that uh, we're actually excited to work on and, and understand how we can best serve our online population. Thank you. Other questions? Sure.
sure. That's. Thank you. The comment is from a representative from the nursing uh, program here at Lehman. Um, excited about the technology and thinking about the use of the business intelligence tool with regard to how um, uh, the tool can help to optimize the program, which is one of our most uh, important and popular uh, programs. Um, the health care uh, industry, if you will, in the Bronx is, the, um, is a very uh, important industry. We have lots of hospitals, but we also have significant health needs among our population. So Lehman is just about to start uh, with a new dean, uh, a new school of health sciences, human services, and nursing, and we're very excited about that and look forward to working to use these tools to support that program and, and uh, health care in the Bronx. Um, Migdia, let me ask if there's any online questions. There aren't. Okay. So I think that uh, if there's no other questions from the audience, we'll take a break and we'll begin to prepare for our next, um, our next uh, member who will speak. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we appreciate it. Marzi, hang on. There's one more comment. Marzi, come on up. I just have questions from our online audience, but we do have almost 35 participants uh, online. Uh, they're from uh, different locations, including Puerto Rico, um, and we are very excited about that. Uh, so um, if our online audience can hear me, uh, please send your questions. Uh, we still have a few more minutes. Otherwise, uh, as uh, Mr. Bergman mentioned, we're going to go uh, for a break. Please make sure you're going to be back uh, by um, 10.45. We're going to have a very interesting session, I promise you. It's going to be very interesting, the next one, as well as the one that you just obviously uh, saw. So uh, please be back by 10.45. No questions, right? Okay, thank you.